Hello again, welcome to another channel chat. I wasn't necessarily expecting to do another one of these so soon, but I got some good feedback from the last one I did, so I decided to do another one. Also got a couple of things to talk about again. Firstly, I want to say thanks to everyone who responded on my first one about the adverts that are starting to appear on my channel, on my videos. I haven't really decided long term whether I will have adverts or not when I reach a thousand subscribers, but at least I've got something to think about and I thank you all for that feedback. Now onto the main topic for this video which was Play Expo which took place last Saturday or it did for me at least that's the day I went and I was there for most of the day I'm putting some video and photos I got there they're not very good quality they're just recording with my phone but this gives you a flavour of what the event was like overall I think they did a good job replay events this is the first Play Expo they've put on since the pandemic and it was intentionally scaled back in some respects there was no stage and the areas were spaced out a little bit more the capacity was somewhat reduced but overall I think they did a good job in terms of the Covid protection or prevention measures they had hand sanitizer around that you could use plenty of spaced out wherever they could between the aisleways and the machines and also they were wiping down the machines regularly as well so it was hardly perfect you, you know there was definitely a chance of getting Covid there I think if someone had it but I think they did the best to try and space things out and overall I think it was a good event perhaps lacking a few of the things you'd expect but the good thing for me was the arcade machines they had plenty of them there and quite a few have not played before or not played for a long time such as the sit down enduro race where you get to pull the wheelies they had the Star Wars cockpit there which I always love to have a play on and the hydraulic sit in out run as well so loads of great games there One thing I did come across which I thought was particularly interesting to me and I've never played it in the arcades before was Pizza Packrat. That's a game I played in my Silverbird selection, the Commodore 64 version a couple of months ago and it was interesting to do a comparison having never played the arcade machine before. I have to say the controls on the arcade machine are very peculiar, you've got like this weird kind of wobbly joystick with a fire button on the top of it and another button for throwing the stones when you collect them. The graphics are obviously a lot nicer than the Commodore 64 version, the sound is actually quite similar. Overall I thought the gameplay probably wasn't quite as good as the C64 version and also the first level on the arcade version is really small, it only takes up one screen rather than scrolling so that was a bit bizarre but overall it was an interesting experience to try the arcade version and do a real comparison between the two. It was really nice to catch up with a few people I've not seen for a couple of years. A lot of my friends go to these events, quite a few of them actually work at them as well. So it was nice to catch up with them. One guy I caught up with was Jim Bagley, who was demonstrating his latest project, which was eight mini arcade machines running from one microcontroller. A very clever setup, which he hopes to get into schools ultimately, or educational setups, where you can actually mess around building the microcontrollers and the machines. I really enjoyed playing the multiplayer games of that setup. There were versions of games like Combat and the Tron Light Cycles, but you could play across all eight machines against each other. And it also, for games like Space Invaders that it had running on it, if you got the high score on one machine, it would automatically write it to all the other machines. So that's really clever. Jim's way too clever for his own good, so that was a really interesting thing to take a look at. I also had a look around the trading hall. There wasn't really a lot there of interest to me. The main thing I'm looking for is those three Silver Range games that I haven't got yet for my collection. There were a few stalls selling Commodore 64 games and other 8-bit cassettes, but I couldn't really find anything much of interest, certainly nothing from the Silverbird or Firebird range. And I have to say, some of the games that people were selling were ridiculously priced. I did see a copy of Wonder Boy on the Commodore 64 for £20, which is frankly ridiculous. I did manage to pick up a couple of things though. Firstly, I got one Commodore 64 game. This is actually given to me free by the nice chaps on the console passion stall who are friends of mine, and it's called Moby Dick. I've never seen this game before but I read the description of it and I thought it sounded interesting. It says, the object of this game is to blow up submarines, destroy the helicopter and catch the falling pilot but do not kill the whale. If the player destroys the helicopter they must rush to catch the falling pilot so that the pilot falls on board the ship. And if the player hits the whale with a depth charge, his or her ship, and it does say his or her ship, will be destroyed by a green ship that will appear and ramp his or her ship. So very detailed overview of the game on the back there. And yeah, quite an interesting packaging as well. As I said, never heard of the game. Might give it a play on a video at some point, but I just basically was interested in it and the guys on the store said, just take it because probably no one else was going to buy it. And the second thing I picked up 
was one of these Funko Classic Gaming characters and it's Qbert. There he is, pretty cute. Although I have to say the eyes don't look quite right for Qbert in my opinion. So that'll probably just go up on the shelf behind me. What I did like about these was the boxes that they come in which are like little arcade machines. As you can see there you've got the joystick and the screen on the front of them. So they're quite nice as well. And also on the back you can see all the other things that you can get in this range, all the other characters. Uh, and I've already put an order in on eBay, bought one of the Pookas from the bottom there from Dig Dug because I do like that character as well. So yeah, they were quite nice. Didn't find much else of interest to me. I'm not really buying a lot of stuff these days. Those are my thoughts on Play Expo then. Overall, I had a great time and it was nice to get out and socialize for the first time in a couple of years. So now I'm gonna move on and talk about my gaming memories videos. I just recently put up my MSX exclusives one and I've got another couple in mind for the next two that will come over the next couple of months. But beyond there, I'd like to get your feedback on what you'd like to see as a future gaming memories video. So I've got three ideas in mind and I'm gonna put the possibility of voting for these up on my community section, which I can now do on the channel. But also you can just leave a comment if you prefer. So these are the three options. My first idea is 10 Mega Drive shoot 'em ups that won't break the bank. As you know, there's a lot of Mega Drive shooters that cost an absolute fortune, but there are some that you can get for a reasonable sort of price, so I thought it might be interesting to do a video of the best 10 of those. My second idea is the best 10 BBC Micro official arcade conversions. I've done this as a Commodore 64 video, and I mentioned in that video that there weren't very many for the BBC Micro, but I thought it might be interesting to look at those that were released as official arcade conversions on that system. I have to say there's some really terrible ones as well, which I may also mention in the video. And the third idea I've got is 10 great platformers that you've probably never played. And in that video, I would go through a variety of systems, picking out some fairly obscure platformers that perhaps you've not played before that I think are worth taking a look at. So let me know in the comments or by voting which of those gaming memories video ideas you like the most, and I'll take that feedback into consideration. That's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back with another Silverbird Selection game review very soon. Bye for now!